Um, we have a ton, like millions and millions and millions of you listening that have come to us in the last 18 months or so. A lot of new folks have joined the tribe in the last little while. So let me um, kind of walk you through after doing this for 25 years here on the air and um, working with you. One of the things I have learned to do, I didn't, I don't always do it right, but I've learned to do is listen to what you're not saying or what, so to speak, reading between the lines. The Hebrew word called Shama, when you're reading scriptures, uh, the question behind the question, the problem behind the problem, the opportunity behind the opportunity. There's a thing that happens when uh, to your language, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the, you, the words that you use, even your sentence structure, reveals oftentimes what's going on in our lives. Me too, in our lives. Whether we're feeling optimistic or angry or afraid, um, whether we are uh, having the best time of our life or the worst time of our life, um, we're terrified. Uh, sometimes people being on the air here, it may, a caller, they're nervous. Um, we've never lost a patient, but sometimes it's, it's natural to be nervous to be on the radio in front of 15 million people. I mean, that's natural. But uh, one thing that you can watch for in your own speech is when you are describing your life, your situation, your financial position, your career position, when you start making broad statements as absolute dogmatic fact, and I'll give you some examples, you can tell that the, that the situation is no longer the problem. The way you're looking at the situation is the problem. Here's an example. Dave, no, there are no rental properties in our city under X, $1,500 a month. I have to get a rental property that's fifteen hundred dollars a month. You don't understand our city. There is no such thing as a rental property. These absolute statements under fifteen hundred dollars a month. I have to pay fifteen hundred dollars a month. You just don't understand. That's what it costs to live here. There's no rental properties under fifteen hundred dollars a month. See, when you make a statement like that, you are not making an accurate statement about your area. You're making a statement about your view of your area. And somehow you're wanting to get a pass on math. And you're saying, well, I'm stuck, and so I'm just going to go ahead and be stupid. People like me can't get ahead. And you're doing a glass half, half empty kind of thing. You're being a pessimist instead of an optimist. And in philosophical terms, you've become a fatalist. Well, I can, you just you don't understand. The only way you, I'm going to be you want me to be homeless? It's either homeless or fifteen hundred dollars, and that's a fatalistic viewpoint. It's also wrong. It's stupid because everybody listening in that that lives in that city knows that you can find something under fifteen hundred dollars in that city, right? So when you make a fatalistic, absolute, dogmatic statement like that, it what it really means is your spirit is reaching hopelessness. You're feeling stuck. It doesn't mean there aren't any rental properties that you can get fined. You move a little bit further out of town. You can live in a different area than you want to live in, maybe in that town, but you can always find something to rent different than that. You can always do different. And that's why I was jumping on her case a minute ago, the lady that called from Jacksonville, Florida, young lady. Everyone in Jacksonville, Florida, that is hiring information technology requires five years experience. To which my mind immediately says, well, that's absolutely not true. That is just not true. That's, the, that's what you've been told, and you've been beat up and rejected a lot, but that's just simply not true. Is there, is there another way to, to get at your job look, okay? But, you're, you know, there's not a single company out of a, what, what is Jacksonville, two, three million people? You know, there's not a single company that's ever hired anyone with a four-year degree 
in information technology without experience. That's absurd. It's just ridiculous. Now, that doesn't mean she's ridiculous, but what that says is her spirit in that situation, she's just, I don't know what's happening with her. She's putting in applications, getting rejected. Her job hunt process is wrong. She's not been able to get her foot in the door. I didn't have time to give her full career counseling and all that, but I'm not picking on her. I'm just teaching you. When you start using statements like that, no one in our town leases a property for under $1,500. No one in this city of 3 million people has ever hired an IT person without experience. That's just ridiculous. No one has ever hired a person that's bald. No one has ever gotten married that was overweight. You know, I don't know. That's just bull. You know, I mean, you know, but that's just, these, these are abs. And when you hear yourself turn into a drama queen like that or drama king like that, that says there's something going on inside of you. It's not reflective of the situation because of the absurdity of your statement. And so what I'm teaching you is this, I'm not picking on her. My, what I'm teaching you is I do that too. I've done it too. And, but when you go to an absolute fatalistic position like that in drama queen mode, what you're doing is you're slipping off into the land of victim. I'm a victim because no, cause you just can't get ahead here. The little man can't get ahead. You don't know about the isms, the sexisms and the racisms and the republicanisms and the democratisms and the baldisms and the fat people isms and you don't know about all the isms the isms will hold you back the isms will hold you back they do racism's real it's out there there's some jerks out there sexism is real some people don't think women are as smart as men and these are really dumb people you know i mean it's just, it's real it's a reality but do you do you meet people that make it in spite of that yep in spite of their ism i got a hillbilly ism i'm a hillbilly so, you know, it's really difficult to get some radio people in the Northeast to treat people with a Southern accent as if they're intelligent. They think we're operating this thing out of a double wide because I have a Southern accent. It's a stereotype. You know, I'm worth several hundred million dollars. We have 700 employees here. The company does $200 million a year in volume. But we're, we're not real smart over here in the South. You know, isms are real, people. You got to overcome them anyway. You got to go win anyway. You can't slip off into, well, you can't, you know, nobody in the Northeast will carry a Southern guy on the radio. Well, some people won't. That's right. But they're the ones that are missing out on all the revenue I'm producing for their competitors. And I just go up there and win anyway. We go into California and win anyway with our little southern charm. Hello. We go win anyway. Is it hard? Yeah, it's hard. But I'm not going to assume victim status and start making drama queen statements that are fatalistic. Be careful what you're saying with your mouth. It reflects the condition of your spirit. Have the spirit of a victor, not a victim. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.